I'm Paul Pierce, and this is The Truth on the Warriors. The Warriors will win 70 games this year. And this is why I say they won 66, 67 games this year, and KD missed, what, 11, 12 games this year? Hey, they're even better a year ago. They got more depth. They got better chemistry. I could see them winning close to 80 games this year. I project them to win 74 games, so I can see them losing no more than eight games, and that's gonna be because they rest some guys. Even though they'll get fined this year for resting, I don't see them losing double-figure games this year. Not at all. KD has his best shot at winning MVP. They're gonna be the best team. They're gonna have the best record. He's gonna put up his numbers. I just don't see LeBron really pushing for the MVP. He has four of them. I see KD wanting to get that trophy back on his mantle. Definitely, I see him winning it this year. KD, man up. You don't have to hide behind the social media blanket. You are who you are. You're a champion. You're a finals MVP. If you got something to say, say it. How does Paul Pierce handle Twitter trolls? I ignore them. What do I have to say back to a Twitter, Twitter troller? You're hiding behind some words. I just ignore them. I get my point across and I move on. So Adam Silver made a little news at the NBA's preseason game in China yesterday, saying the league is, quote, continuing to look at reformatting the playoffs. The idea on the table is simple. No more dividing things up by conferences. Just the best 16 teams overall will get into the postseason. More talent in the West this year? Well, then more West teams should get in. And Seb 500 teams in the East, maybe they wouldn't. The hope is that first round matchups would be less lopsided. The finals would, in theory, more consistently feature the best of the best. Look, the WNBA already does a version of this, and to say it's worked would be an understatement. The result has been two spectacular take it to the max final series between the Sparks and Lynx, teams that both play in the West, and so under the old system, never would have met on the sport's biggest stage. Of course, the WNBA is not the NBA. With the women, the pool of playoff teams is smaller. The regular season is much shorter, so there's significantly less wear and tear. With the men, well, the NBA office estimates that in a straight 1 through 16 system, 70% of playoff games would be between teams who had to change time zones back and forth. And you can say, hey, teams fly private charters now, and they do, but travel is still travel, and the human body still gets worn down by it. You'd either have to compensate by adding a boatload of extra rest days to a postseason that already stretches two months, or you'd have to push players much harder than is healthy, likely resulting in injuries just when you'd want the league stars on the floor the most. There's also the matter of changing the regular season schedule. Oh yeah, if you're gonna get rid of conferences in the playoffs, you'd have to do it in the regular season too, because if at the end everyone's record is getting lumped together, a team like Houston shouldn't have to face a team like the Warriors four times when a team like Washington only has to play Golden State twice. So again, you are talking about pushing teams into cramming a lot more cross-country travel in, and this is when the NBA is trying to take player health more seriously. Maybe the NBA could just cut down in number of games altogether to balance things out more fairly. But then here's the real thing to remember getting any of these big changes passed. The owners would have to vote for them. Do we see owners voting to reduce the number of overall games and in turn reducing revenue? Say it with me, no we don't. Do we see owners of teams that now make the playoffs in the weaker conference voting for a system where they would suddenly stop making the playoffs? No, we do not. Do we see them voting for a schedule that makes it more likely that their biggest stars could get hurt? Not so much. So yeah, as Adam Silver says, the NBA will continue to look at reformatting the playoffs. I just wouldn't hold my breath waiting for it to happen anytime soon. Now, Steven, you think it should happen though, right? I think it'll be cool. I, I mean, I, it'll be, we got people that love the game, the competitiveness, it'll definitely be good, but we know the West is going to dominate it, so you might not see too many Eastern teams. So I don't see the Eastern Conference voting for it, but it will definitely be more competitive. Let's do it right now. What are we, other than the voting thing, which is a real thing, 
like this unbalanced schedule, it, it actually hurts the Western Conference. The Western teams have to like actually play each other 52 times. Right. The East gets to have their little slap fights against each other 52 times. The Western team, if they finish with a better record than an Eastern Conference world, it's like they should deserve extra credit. They I should get credit for it. I want you to go to John Wall and LeBron in front of them and say that their battles are No, they're, they're above this. We're talking about, you know, who's Charlotte, Detroit, all these teams that are going to fight for the eighth seed. I mean, right. it's like the West deserves extra credit. Let's do it now. Okay, so it's nice to say, and I agree, it would be great, but how do you actually do it living in the real world? Well, step one, how about we go back to best of five first round series? Okay, again, do you see NBA owners voting to reduce playoff revenue? They already had it once, and actually, I, I would be curious to see how much shorter the first round would actually be because if you did that, given how many sweeps we've had. I don't know, how, it's probably a little bit shorter, but I would be right. curious to see. I don't know if, I don't know if they're going to go back. Though. The dominant teams would still be dominant regardless. Right. I mean, the first round, I think you would still get some lopsided, some lopsided series. The, the idea would be that it would be equally hard for everyone then as they got closer and closer in. The WNBA gives some of its teams first round buys. So right. You kind of look into that. You know, you can also well. sell it to the East owners by saying, you, you, you actually, you guys are so bad, you need lottery picks. So how, and we've just changed the lottery odds starting in 2019, where if you just miss the playoffs, you now have a better chance of moving up. So how about like you want to make your team better? You miss the playoffs, but that's your reward. But how good would it be? the last team, the 16th seed, beating the one seed. We've seen how exciting it is for an eight seed to be a one. Imagine a 16 every, beating you're the gonna, one. You're going to rope this into every that'll, show. That'll be awesome. That'll be awesome to see a 16 beat a one. Yeah, would you blame, do you blame him? No, I would be talking about it every five minutes. Right? I would too, absolutely. I mean, I, I just, I, I agree all the reasons why it's a good idea. I just don't see owners voting against right. Cutting down don't don't mind. give up. Don't let it get you down. The cynicism. I'm all on the cynicism. Come this on. is normally your job to be cynical. Change, I know what's change. happening. I know. We'll it's the things that things weird. It's weird here in Bristol. I'm Paul Pierce, and this is the truth on Lonzo Ball, the most anticipated rookie in the league. Lonzo Ball, I believe, will win Rookie of the Year. I'm gonna speak it into existence. He's gonna play all the minutes. He's going to have the ball in his hands the whole time, and there's just so much hype surrounding him. Ain't you lucky, Magic, I brought you this boy. He's going to have the best chance out of everyone to win Rookie of the Year, and I truly believe he will. He messed around and got himself a triple-double. Is Lonzo Ball the next Jason Kidd? I would not go that far. Jason Kidd is one of the greatest players we've ever seen. Let's give this kid some time. You know, maybe over time he can prove he's close to Jason Kidd, but I don't see it right now. This is all about them bees. Billions. The big baller brand is about to blow up. We see the NCAA investigation with these shoe companies. The one free and clean shoe company is the big baller brand. You guys coming out of college, better get your big baller brand now before it blows up. I want to move on to Zach's latest column, which just came out today. NBA tiers. I love when you do this. Let's uh, reveal your top two tiers for those who haven't read the piece yet. Tier number one, the Warriors. That's it. Yep. <laughs> That's it. They're their own tier. That's it. There we go. Next, Zach has four teams in what he calls the quote, hoping for an ankle sprain tier. That's fantastic. Sorry. The Cavs, Thunders, Rockets, and Spurs. I mean, look, we saw Steph Curry lighting up the Wolves yesterday. I'm not sure there's an answer to this question, but Stephen. If you look at his ankle tier, who do you think maybe could jump into the Warriors tier? Well, I have all those guys even too. I, I, I got different. I, I think if OKC could score, I mean, could play defense the same level that Golden State plays, they have a chance. They can score with them, but can they play defense? Can San Antonio score with them? They can defend with them, but they can't score with them. So if they can figure those things out, they can compete. But right now, Golden State's way ahead of everybody. So we have these two wild experiments in the West, right? Oklahoma City and Houston totally changed up the dynamics of their teams. Whichever one of those hits, right. I think that's the answer. Whether it's Houston is a little deeper, I think, can go with five wings, which is what you need to play the Warriors. And Oklahoma City, I think, has the higher upside just because of the stars, but they're a little thin. I feel like they're one little move away. And Cleveland gets to play in the junior varsity, so it's like it's, it's a whole different thing. <laughs> Again, I want you to go to LeBron James and just have this okay. right I'll in front of him. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Be fine. I want to follow up on a story we covered on Friday. We mentioned how Kevin McHale, James Harden's former coach, of course, said Harden was, quote, not a leader during an episode of NBA TV's Open Court. Well, Harden was asked about it this weekend, did not hold back in his response at all. Take a listen. He's a clown. 
<laughs> honestly. You know, uh, I've, 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 I did anything and everything he asked me you know, to do. I try to lead his team every single day since I've stepped foot here in Houston. He's never taught me anything, um, you know, to be a leader. But I, I've done a great job, you know, I think, in, in, you know, you know, the organization, my, my coaches, you can ask any of those guys, um, you know, how, how I've worked extremely hard every single day to, to better, you know, obviously be a basketball player, but be a leader as well. Um, Steven. I, lo I love James. He just <laughs> made me laugh. You know, just his insults are just so cool and laid back. But uh, <laughs> he is the offensive leader. You know what I'm saying? Right. The best players lead by example. You want your best players to lead by example, and he is not your defensive leader for sure. Nope. So I understand what Mikhail is saying in so many ways. Like Tim Duncan, for example, he was our defensive leader. Mm -hmm. He was our offensive leader. But the biggest thing, when Pop get on somebody, he can get on Tim and curse him out. How could guys like us not take it? So you, when you teach through your best players, if you can't teach through your best player, then he is not your leader. Your best player has to be, has to be your leader, and James was not their best player. I mean, that was not their leader, but he was their best player. Yeah, his leadership kind of fell apart at the end of that Spurs series last year. I thought I think this whole thing is kind of great theater, and I don't think um, I, James is clearly right to defend himself. He got called out. He can say whatever he wants, and right. I don't think anything that Kevin said was like that far out That's of what opinion. the consensus. It's also not that far out of what the consensus is. Like James Harden's an all-time great offensive player. Is he a leader? I don't know. They have a leader now. That, well, that, I mean, I think that was part of Kevin's point. Is mm -hmm. hey, Chris Paul came there, and he's considered one of the great leaders in the NBA right now. Kevin's point also was that James was not a leader when he was there. I think you do have to give Harden some credit that he went back that summer after Kevin left and said, and after things really, remember, one, two, three, Cancun, that, that, that year, right. um, <laughs> that he came back and said, hey, I have to do better. And then you saw him making a lot of efforts with the players in the locker room mm -hmm. to gather them for a little mini camp and try to sort of lead by example in other ways. He played more defense, at least, a little bit of that. So I, I'm sure that part of that visceral reaction was, hey, I I've improved since then. Right. You're not seeing it. And that, that probably is part of what we're seeing, too. But you're right. It's great theater. He's a clown. I mean, you know, you want to, this is the NBA. It's why it's like high school. You got the insults and everything. Uh, Rajan Rondo, who suffered a sports hernia injury on Friday night, he's meeting with a specialist in Philly. If he decides to have that surgery, I'm told it would be a four to six week recovery. Uh, that's still something they're working through today, uh, deciding whether he's going to be out. And that's a New Orleans team that just doesn't have depth mm -hmm. uh, to afford that kind of an injury. Yeah, and they're also, I mean, he's so important there for chemistry with Boogie, makes Boogie happy, right. Boogie whisperer, I guess, right? So mm -hmm. that happens I guess didn't really help in Sacramento <laughs> <laughs> that's a big reason why they brought him in there though yes so I don't know see about that I want to get to Lonzo Ball and to Aaron Fox though they would have faced off in last night's preseason game in Vegas if Lonzo wasn't forced to sit out with an injured ankle. Well, folks weighed in on social media because of course they did. Um, Lonzo also missed their summer league game. You remember there was some chatter back and forth during the draft. After House of Hoops said Fox is showing flashes, look who joins in. The aforementioned Boogie Cousins. He says, quote, shorty got to stop running from that action <laughs> with the eyes emoji on the end. Steven. You agree with Cousins there? Tell it like think, it is, uh, Boogie. Tell it like it is. It's smart by the Lakers, though. You don't want uh, De'Aaron to take his confidence so soon. You know, <laughs> you need your rookie point guard to come out and be confident and have a good season. But, uh, yeah, he's running from that action, no question. I mean, he does legitimately have an injured ankle. He's so. running from that action. <laughs> <laughs> he's running. He's I just running. like that Boogie is still like the ombudsman for Sacramento basketball, even, yeah. even after he's gone. Uh, can I just say, wake me up on November 22nd when they play? Yeah. Let's see what happens. Like, I just, like can we just go fast forward to that? I'm, I'm very excited for both of them. The Fox kid looks awesome. He's amazing. We had him on the show, and he's just, his personality jumps off the screen. And, yeah. and the court, he's so much fun. He seems to be developing so fast. Are you using your I don't care on this one? I'm allowed one I don't care per show. I th Yeah, sure, I don't care. All How right. about that? I don't there care. we go. <laughs> With the second pick, the Los Angeles Lakers select Lonzo Ball. Since seventh grade, you know, I've been working to get to the NBA, and now I'm finally here. Uh, dream come true. Oh, I'm happy they call my name. I'm coming back home. Ball with the step through. Oh, showtime. Lonzo Ball. The way I play, I just go out there and have fun and try to get wins. I got it. I got it. I guess that fits into the Showtime category. Ball. Got himself a triple-double. Yeah, 
just have to go out there every day and try to get better. Uh, he can really, really pass. I'm definitely ready for the season. I'm uh, very excited. Well, ball for three. Got it. I love all my fans and everybody that supports me. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all about basketball.